Today on Vital Insights. And I think the historical problem with sleep analysis in a home or, or um, uh, even an RPM setting or consumer setting has been that they're com- this is coming from devices that haven't been validated against the gold standard. Welcome to an episode of Vital Insights, a podcast series focused on thought leaders and healthcare providers who are working to transform the way we care for patients, now and in the future. So sleep has been an exciting addition to the range of things consumers now use wearables to monitor and track, with everything from fitness trackers to smartwatches to rings. But for healthcare providers, the ability to tap into sleep as a source of health information hasn't been as easy. Let's talk about a future where we can use sleep as a clinical marker in the same way we use heart rate, blood pressure, weight, and blood ox to provide a robust picture of patient health. So just to set the stage, let's go back a little bit and talk about the initial wave of sleep monitoring devices for consumers. What do you feel those brought to the marketplace in terms of broader accessibility and acceptance of sleep as another data source? Well, it's a really good question. I think the the answer is really multi, multifold. I think first and foremost, it's awareness. I mean, it drew huge attention to um, to sleep and tracking sleep to both uh, consumers, individuals, and uh, and to providers, caregivers. And I think that this general um, awareness of how important sleep is to health was probably the most important part that came out of it. I think for us, for early sense, it's really probably more about uh, the general um, focus and investment in the technologies that uh, to analyze sleep. And, and really that gets back to kind of the formation of the company because uh, obviously as a sleep sensor, this was very uh you know, important to understand uh, how we could, um, you know, support sleep analysis with our sensing technology. So healthcare providers have been monitoring sleep with technology for decades. Can you talk about the history of that with relation to early sense technology? Sure. I I mean, I I think it it comes back to... um, you know, the fact that you know, the way we gather our signals is um, as a non-contact sensor placed under the mattress in a bed. So by definition, the, con- the company grew out of uh, monitoring individuals while they sleep to gather vital signs and other key, you know, motion and as a natural extension of that, we're analyzing them. Uh, uh, while they sleep. So we're already, uh, we're studying the impact of uh, changes in their uh, vital signs and motion during the sleep pattern. So it was a natural extension to, to look at this. And the company, I mean, almost since its inception has been analyzing and perfecting um, the algorithms to do sleep analysis and comparing that against some of the existing gold standards for sleep. And, uh, you know, and so that was um, at the very front, of, front end of the company um, a key aspect of the technology. So if we merge kind of the two thoughts we've discussed already together, the notion that consumers understand the importance of tracking sleep and that healthcare providers appreciate the value of sleep data and how to use it in the management of complex chronic disease, we arrive at a place where there's broad acceptance for using sleep data and most importantly biometrics captured during sleep um, to provide insights into patient health. So let's talk about what's standing in the way of that. You have talked about a couple times, a couple different factors that have been prohibitive to sleep being used in clinical settings. 
The first is the lack of many sleep sensors to align to that gold standard for sleep assessment, which is polyosomnography. Did I say that right? Close enough. <laughs> or PSG. Yeah, right. I'm just going to go with its acronym. Can you talk about why that alignment is important? Well, I think in, um, you know, in clinical management, having uh, data that's coming from uh, devices that are validated against the gold standard is key. And I think the historical problem with sleep analysis in a home or, or um, uh, even an RPM setting or consumer setting has been that they're com this is coming from devices that haven't been validated against the gold standard. And so I think if you're a caregiver looking to use sleep data to manage your patient, um, and if that sleep data isn't validated against some gold standard, it's going to be prohibitive. They're just not going to use it typically. Now, it may work in some wellness settings and uh, as a broad trend, but uh, in general, to do critical care management, it's not going to happen. And then the other issue is tied to something we see across the board with traditional remote patient monitoring. And that is, how do we take the reams of data, in this case sleep data, from each night and extrapolate only the information that providers need? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, um, that's really a fundamental um, you know, focus for early sense. Because we're all about continuous monitoring, we're generating you know, uh, a couple order, some magnitude more data than a typical RPM uh, environment. Right. And so as a result of that, we've had to come up with uh, analytical tools to ensure that we can, um, you know, summarize the data gathered during a sleep session into indices or scoring or clinical markers that can be used by a by a caregiver. So, for example, we have something that we call the sleep score that we gather uh, overnight where we look at um, seven or eight key clinical markers and we, we track those and the changes in those from the last night against the preceding um, a month's worth of data and look at the subtle changes in each of those and score them and come up with a shift. Uh, whether that uh, in that sleep score, which um, can be a flag to a caregiver without having to go look through all those eight different uh, measurements to determine whether there's something to look at. And it's that type of methodology is really what's needed with continuous data is to boil it down and tease out the information that's critical to the caregiver to make the right decisions at the right time. So it's really that combination of alignment to the gold standard in addition to that AI or machine learning algorithmic assessment of the data itself. Right. And I mean, even, even uh, rules-based algorithms for looking at that data is uh, a huge improvement over having to do that manually. And AI, of course, then takes it to the next level and allows it to look also at other similar populations and look at how those changes in those clinical markers impacted their diagnosis and be able to use that information. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to talking to you again. Thank you, Liz.